Welcome back to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk from the Ruger booth at the NRA Show. All right, back with you. Tom Gresham here. It's Gun Talk. We are at the NRA's annual meetings in Indianapolis, having a ball here. Uh, got lots of folks around. It is a crowded, crowded uh, floor. They have At the NRA annual meetings, there are the annual meetings, and that's going on. They have workshops going on at all these places around us, but they also have... Um, this huge exhibit hall. It's kind of a miniature shot show, if you will, but it's over to the public. We're joined right now, uh, David Workman from Proper. Uh, David, this place is really crowded today. It is amazing. We were not sure what to expect yesterday, being it was a it was there Friday. Were, there were a lot of people here on Friday. There were, and then today, Saturday, of course, everybody's off work. Right. And so they're all cramming in here. It's it's fantastic. I think the estimated attendance this year is about 75,000. Holy cow. That's what I heard last. Well, I know... I was trying to make my way, you know, to see some other booths. It was nearly impossible. You just couldn't get through the hallways. Uh, I mean, it, it's a good thing. Sure. There's lots of people here. Right. And everybody's kind of going, wow. If you've not been here, I tell people, it's kind of like trying to describe the Grand Canyon. It's so much bigger than you can imagine. You can't do it. And, and people say, well, you know, I'll, I'll go spend a day there. I said, well, yeah, that's fine, but you're not going to see it all. No. Said, what do you mean you can't see it today? You can't see it in a day, I'm telling you. Right. It's like going to Disney. Yes. You can't it's see all where they, they Where they sell two-day tickets. Right? Yes, you and know. that's not enough. Right. Exactly right. So how long have you been coming to this? This is our, well, I've been coming for about four or five years, but this is our third year, I'm sorry, second year to display. Okay. As exhibit, uh, as a company. Right. So, so explain who Proper is. Sure. I guess. Well, we are a 52-year-old clothing and apparel company in the tactical gear business, of course, because that's this niche. Sure. That's why you're here. Um, and we started out, uh, for about the first 40 years of our existence were exclusive military contracts. Okay. BDUs, ACUs. Uh, started out in Vietnam. Did the uh, little Dixie Cup caps for the sailors. Those oh, white yeah? Dixie Cup caps. That was our first contract in 1967. You still have some of those? Somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I know one of our guys in the office has an original from way back when. Oh, wow. From 52 years ago. But then about uh, a dozen or so years ago, we got a commercial line. So now we do law enforcement and then civilian uh, apparel and gear as well. Right. And we do pants, uh, shirts, backpacks, boots, hats, whatever you need for a range day or concealed carry. We don't... And then- I would say maybe 10 years ago and beyond, it would have been unusual to see someone wearing the type of clothes you're making now on everyday wear. Mm -hmm. You might wear those at the range. If you went out to a gun site, you went to someplace like that, you might wear them there. But now it's become really everyday wear. It has. And people are kind of used to the tactical look, although we have found recently that that there's been a bit of a shift going the other way a little bit. So we have introduced some new clothing that doesn't look as tactical on the outside, but it has all the same tactical features. Kind of the, the whole gray man idea. Gray man, of, I, exactly. I, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Right. And the idea behind that is if you're a CCW, you're carrying an, at, at dinner with your family, for example, and somebody comes in and wants to cause trouble, they don't isolate you and say, oh, you're the gun guy. You're yeah, my you, first target. You ought to be the tactical Tommy guy there. Right. And also, frankly, you just kind of blend in. Now, i got to tell you, though, I mean, I'm a huge fan of cargo pants because, yep. uh, well, first of all, I like my big phone, okay? So I've got to have a big pocket for my big phone. But now that we've got these monster phone things, yes. uh, cargo pockets are cool. Well, okay, so the old cargo pants have become today's tactical pants. They have. But it's not just a matter of having big pockets, right? No. It's how they're placed, too, and how do you get into them. Okay. What for, do you mean? For example, you'll have pockets that maybe have a welt pocket, which for those not familiar with apparel terms, that's a non-flap cover. Okay. So like a hand pocket or a back pocket without a flap. Okay. Versus one that has a flap and Velcro over it. Right. Or a snap. Harder to get into. Um, and you, so you have less tactical look, but you have that functionality of having that big pocket for your phone or for your tablet or for, for travel wear. Sure. I find a lot of people wear these for travel, even oh, yeah. if they're not you, gun people. They, yeah, they you, travel. you stick all your stuff in there. Exactly. Now, I've been following you on Facebook, and you've been doing a bunch of shooting recently. Uh, have, yes. And you get to hang out with cool people. I do. So recently, uh, Jerry Mitchlick, who, of course, world's fastest shooter and one of our brand ambassadors, came to St. Louis, where we're based, okay. and we had a range day with him, and it was, it was really, really fun. The, the range in Baldwin, uh, Range St. Louis West, a local range uh, there in St. Louis, hosted this event for us, and he came over and competed against 25 paying customers oh, wow. to try to beat him. Oh, what a fun deal. Uh, yeah, and nobody did, of course which we not. figured yeah. would be the case. Yeah, <laughs> but, if, if they did, you'd already know about them. Oh, absolutely, yes. absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And, and it was just fun to get to ch- a chance to shoot against and say, hey, I shot against Jerry Mitchell. Oh, yeah. And then the, the really neat part about it was Jerry is such a low-key kind of guy. He is mm-hmm. just an average Joe guy. If you get to know him personally, he's, he's not 
a superstar in his own mind. No. He just is not at all. And when people weren't shooting, they were talking with him, and he was giving them little gold, little nuggets of gold tricks and tips and tidbits about and, how to and, shoot and better. And things that he can spin off, just little things, may not be a big deal to him. It's stuff he, he's known forever. But to you and to me, as you say, it's gold. It is, absolutely is. And it's stuff you would never think of until he says to you, so oh, often. yeah, you should do this. And you think, you know, that makes complete sense. Right. And, you're going, and of course, when I first started learning from people like Jerry, I'd say, well, how, do they, how does he know that? And then I think, well, wait. All he does is go out and shoot. Yes. And it's like, okay, how can I shave a thousandth of a second off? Mm-hmm. How can I make sure this shot is just right on target? And that's what they do all day. It's what they think about all day. It's what they perfect with their gear, with their technique, with their trigger placement, with their finger placement, everything. And so when somebody like that, and they're, they're all that way. I don't care if it's Doug Koenig or Jerry Mitchell. They're all giving with their information. They truly are. And, and all of the people I've met uh, in this industry are just like that. And, and our three brand ambassadors, Jerry Mitchell, uh, Jared Ogden, and Mandy Bachman, mm-hmm. are all just regular people. And they're happy to share their information. What, what got them to where they are. Well, they share the passion. They, they truly do. They truly do. And that's one thing that I'm, I talk about a lot in this industry, which is that everybody wants to uh, outsell everybody else. FM wants to outsell Glock, wants to outsell Winchester, sure. and so forth. But when it all boils down to it, we're all 2A supporters. Yes. And that's what, that's what kind of holds the glue together in this it, industry. It's so interesting you mentioned that. And, other, well, and you know, in, even the gar- garment business. Mm-hmm. At the end of a trade show in the garment world, if you went out and had dinner with your competitor, that would be an absolute no-no. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And here, you got the Glock guys with the FN guys with yeah. the Ruger guy because they all shoot together and they all have the shared passion. Now, when they get back the next day, they're going to beat each other up for market share. Absolutely. But then they're going to go out for a drink right. and have some fun again and go shooting, right? Right. This industry is all about networking. It's all about relationships, who you know and how you know them and how you follow them and work together. Um, I came from other industries where it was just as you described. You did not talk to your competitors right. at all. That was grounds for firing. You did not do that. <laughs> right. But here, it's grounds for promotion because it's fantastic. Your, your networking is great. It's like, okay, I'm just sitting here looking. Yeah. Okay. We are in the Ruger booth. Mm-hmm. We're across from the FN booth. We're down the road, where you got the Brownells booth. You got, and you will see people moving from booth to booth. There's, it's, I don't know, David, it sounds corny, but there's a culture connection. There is. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to say it, but maybe that's it. I don't no, know. No, that's it, true. And we, as much as we like to say there's not really a gun culture, because we like to say that everybody is in the gun culture, really, there, there really there is. is. There or, is a gun culture. Yes, there is. Yeah, you can identify people who, who, who love what they do because they're they are fully in support of, of our right to bear arms. First thing in the morning here, when the doors open, <clears throat> you got thousands of people in here. And over the PA system, somebody starts singing the national anthem. Yep. And everybody stops. Everyone stops. You could hear a pin drop. Absolutely. And you got hearts over, you know, hands over your heart. Everybody stops mm-hmm. until it's over, and then there's applause, and everybody goes. It's like, okay, I know it's a small thing, but it's telling to me. It's an important thing to me. It very much is, and it's a, it's a common bond that we all share. And, and as you said, everybody stops what they're doing. Yeah. We're in here getting set up for the day, but that national anthem, that first note cues up. And we stop. All right. And all the way to the end. For uh, talking about the passion, all right, you got a passion for shooting. What are the last two guns you bought? Uh, last two guns I bought, let's see. Well, I won a Glock 17. Oh, you dog. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> How'd you and, do that? Well, I actually used an outdated Walther PPX <laughs> in a match, in a charity match. And I won a Glock 17. So I, I, I think I, yeah. yeah. That was a pretty good upgrade. That, that was a good there. upgrade, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I love to tell this story. It's not a recent purchase of it, but it's a kind of recent, recent acquisition. Okay. When I was a teenager, um, I learned to shoot. And I learned it on 1022, as so many people do, a right. Ruger 1022. Right. And I now own the gun that I learned oh, to shoot on. Oh, the very one. The very one. Okay. Because a friend of mine, he owned it. And then I got it, and I now own it. And now my kids are learning how to shoot on that very same gun. Okay, that's pretty cool. To me, that's an awesome story to tell people. And I hope their kids learn on, on it. You the have same to thing. make sure, if we're in the Ruger booth, you've got to tell the Ruger guys that. I, I know they hear those stories a lot. And I, I was talking to a Chris Colloy from Ruger. I said, you know, this is a consumer product that we buy with the full expectation that will last our lifetime. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else that yes. we buy like that. We absolutely expect to be able to use it a lot. 
and hand it down to our kids and with the very real possibility that they will hand it down to their kids. Yes. That uh, makes it more than a tool. It makes it more than a, a thing, a product. It's uh, a heritage. Yeah, it's not a, a line item. And for people in this industry, the smart ones, they understand that's what they're making. Yes. Yes. They're, and they, not, they're and not making widgets. Right. They're not. And they're, they're going to they're put the time and the effort to make a high-quality product that's going to last for generations. Yes. And it's a passion they share, and you can see it in the craftsmanship, and you can see it in the way a gun is designed. Okay. So let me fast forward out or take it back to what you do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Obviously, we don't expect clothing to last forever, but we do expect our tactical type clothing to be better than what we can buy just in a store. Yes. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It, it, it's different need. Okay. Because what you have in a store is fashion, basically. All right. Versus tactical sure. gear, which is a tool. It's, it's gear. It's a tool. It, it's gear. It's, it is designed to it's, work it's with equipment. you. It is. It's equipment. Okay. Which happens to look nice. But yes. it's, it's designed with, for example, extra double stitching you know, on pockets. Sure. Re- reinforcements on buttons and snaps. Belt loops have to be in the right place for concealed carry. Where does your holster go? Right. And that's like, okay, nobody in the fashion world would think of that. Nope, they would not. But, but we think of it because we live it every day. And we think if that belt loop's in the wrong place, we've got to fix that. Right. Or we're not going to buy it. We're not going to well, buy exactly. it at all. Well, exactly. I mean, I, and I've done it. You put on the pants, you go, well, yeah, but my, where am I going to put my holster? They put the belt loop in the wrong place. Right. No, I'm not buying these. Exactly. So we think about those as we're designing pants and shirts and so forth and say, how would somebody who's carrying a gun feel about this pair of pants or, this, or these boots or whatever? Right. And you've got a lot of guys coming out of the military who are used to military quality apparel, right, which right. we also, for many, many years, of course, uh, sure. produced. And they're coming into the consumer side or the LE side and saying, hey, can I, I need the same kind of reliability and uh, features, but with a non-camo look. Ah, sure. So we say, absolutely. So, so we design pants. Something that doesn't draw a lot of attention to, which right. goes back to this the new line. What do you call the new line? The Edge Tech Collection. Edge Tech Edge Collection. Tech. Right. Okay. And people can check it out. Uh, what's the website? Uh, proper.com. P R O P P E R dot P R O P P dot prepper. Right, yeah. <laughs> we say the proper is improperly spelled. <laughs> okay. P R O P P E R proper dot com. Check out all the uh, the we it's men and women? It is. We have both. Okay. So you've got uh, clothes. And I mean I wear them, I use them, they last. And the other thing is they're comfortable. Very comfortable. They're like real good everyday wear, you know. Right. Uh, for example, our kinetic pants, which was last year's introduction, I wear them travel all the time. Oh, yeah, because, great travel pants. Yeah, yeah, because they're they're very comfortable with our plane, trains, automobiles. That's it's, there you go. It's, it works. All right, got a scoot here, David. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. All right, don't go far. We'll be right back with more gun talk. The new FN 509 midsize 9mm pistol is now part of FN's legendary concealed carry lineup, and it is a natural fit. With its smaller grip frame modeled after the battle-proven million rounds tested FN 509, the FN 509 midsize comes with two 15-round magazines and naturally improves concealability. Available at your local firearms dealer. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShotgunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. The time is now to band together the time is now to rescue our wetlands. It's the next generation target pistol. The SW22 Victory from Smith & Wesson. Stainless steel frame, interchangeable match barrel, thumb safety, fiber optic sights, and a Picatinny rail. 
The SW22 Victory is ready for anything, targets or small game. Also available with a threaded barrel or cryptic camo finish. And it's backed by the Smith & Wesson Lifetime Service Policy. Learn more about the SW22 Victory at smith-wesson.com. We're going to keep talking about guns because, well, that's what we do. We talk about guns all the time. Tom Gresham here. It's Gun Talk. Uh, we're in the Ruger booth at the NRA's annual meetings. Joined by Ryan Donahue from Crimson Trace. Yes, sir. You, you, and you said that your booth is slammed. It's slammed, Tom. We've been nonstop. Uh, we're one of the few companies that I think actually sells out of the booth. Oh, you do? We do. We okay. do. Okay. I did not realize that. Because, yep. Yeah, you're right. Most, well, Obviously, if you're a gun company, you yeah. can't sell out of your booth. Right, right. That's not possible. Right. But you do sell. So you're absolutely. So give us an idea of what kind of stuff you're selling there. So everything's there, Tom. Really? The entire line of lasers, we bring a good representation of everything we got over there. Um, we yeah. also have all of the sights and all the well, scopes. Well, I was just going to say, because yeah. for those who have not been paying attention over the last couple of years, yep. they think Crimson Trace lasers, which is true. Yep. Okay, establish the the category, really. It's a category leader. 100%, it, yep. But over the last couple of years, it's not just lasers. It's red dots. It's scopes. Yep. It's entire line of optics now. Entire line, you yeah. Become, you're a full-line optic company now. Full, we have 12 brand-new rifle scopes along with five red dots. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that that has to have been a bit of an upheaval for the whole company. It, it, was, it, it wasn't necessarily an upheaval. If, and if it was, it was a fun one. Okay. Um, being able to just, uh, so Jason is one of our product managers over there who's on the sight and scope line. So him and myself are big shooters. Most people that are at Crimson are actually right. shooters. We actually go out there and. It makes a difference. It does make a difference than somebody who just sits behind a desk. So we would have creative meetings where we would just talk about the reticles. Hmm. What do we want to achieve here? What do we want to do with it? That that one that I tell you about quite often, Tom, which we you and I talk about names for it and different things. Right. I like calling it the vanishing reticle, and we had talked about, you know, it, is, there, is it good to have a reticle vanish? Um, so it is a big, bright red ring. It is. What it is is weird. <laughs> I mean, when you first pick it up, you're going, that's just weird. Yeah, I tell and, people in the booth it's a magic trick. Let me yeah. show you a magic trick. And then when you look at it, you go, Oh, okay. I'm, I, I get that. All right, I understand. So explain what it is and how it works. So for me, big three-gun shooter, it is really a bright red ring. Right. And it's a large ring. So people are thinking, you know, when you tell me bright red ring, is it is it a small circle? No, no it's, it's, it's huge. It's it's a, a, think of it as a speed ring. Yeah, speed, speed ring. Speed shooting. With a little precise dot in the center. Okay. So what, what, how that works is pull it up, put it on the target, put the ring around the target, pull the trigger, bang. Right. Right? Quick shots. Then when you dial past four magnification, the ring actually falls out of view, so vanishes, disappears, whatever you want to call it. The ring um, gets bigger yep. as, you're, as you're zooming in. Exactly. And finally, it goes actually past the edge of the scope of what you can see. Yes. Now you can't see the ring now at all. Now you can't see the ring anymore. But now you have the dot. And no, not only do you have the dot, now you have a mill tree that comes into play for the long-range shots. Oh, that's so, so cool. So it's like two reticles in one. It actually is. You've got... Almost a ghost ring ish yep. speed sighting system. Absolutely. And then when you dial it up, now you have your setup for long range shooting. Yeah. What's the magnification range in there? Uh, so there's that reticle is in two different scopes. There's a one to five and a one to eight. Nice. And it's a true one to eight. So true one power on both of those. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. There are some scopes on the market that say they're one power. They're really 1.3, 1.4. 1.1, 1.2, yeah. yeah they're not, it's, it's, it's actually not a particularly easy thing to make a true one power red, yeah, uh, 100%. magnification. The hardest thing about rifle scopes is that one power. Why is that? Uh, you know, I am not the engineer, but I can well, tell you I, that. I know through the years it's always been a thing. Yeah. It is. Um, I think in the manufacturing process, it's really about when you're at the one power, how the reticle looks at that one power and getting oh, it to scale and getting okay. it to magnify correctly from there. Sure. Um, and the actual color of illuminating it. Interesting. Okay. Yep. So, all right. Give me an idea of some of the other scope. We'll, we'll talk about red docs later. Okay. Other we're going to stay on scopes. Stay on scopes because, I mean, 
Scopes are cool, and I'm actually shopping for scopes now. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm the consumer. I will sell point. you one back at the booth later when you're out of here. Because <laughs> you're selling them right out of the booth. We are yeah. selling them right out of the booth. Yeah, okay. we have all the specials. So in the one power line, you also have a one to four as well. Okay. Um, that has a different reticle. It's called our hybrid BDC reticle, so a bullet drop reticle. All right. Um, and then you go over. We we split them up in different sections. So we have one powers. Then we have all of our tactical scopes. So everything from a, I'll tell you my favorite there, is the uh, 5318. So uh, 3 to 18 power rifle Ooh, scope. Wow. Um, and then, you know, 5324, so 3 to 24. Um, so we have a huge number of uh, rifle scopes that we have going on over there right. um, in the tactical line. And then we also have a sport line, which is our hunting, hunting line of optics as well. Okay. How much carryover do you get from you know, the, the tactical, the long range is kind of the real high tech. Yep. How much of that tech ends up getting put into the hunting scope? So there is quite a bit of the tech in the hunting scope. So I can tell you this. I can neither confirm or deny that there will be a second focal plane <laughs> versions of oh, the scope really? coming. Yes, because I know that you're very interested in that. Tech. Yeah. So um, the hunting line is all first focal plane right now. Okay. So um, those are there. So we did some cool stuff with the reticles for the hunters, too, so that it's a more um, simpler pattern mm-hmm. for, for the hunting reticles. And they do scale, and we do have first focal planes on all of those. Okay, very cool. So, all right, so Crimson Trace, obviously lasers. We'll talk about that in a yep. second here. Yep. Uh, scopes, red dots, and other stuff. You whole guys bunch. are a whole bunch of stuff yep. here. The tactical lights, uh, everything. Yeah, it, it's amazing now. what you guys are into. Uh, still located in Oregon. Yes. Okay. Yep. And making a lot of it there. Of course, a lot of the optics are, are now coming in yep. from overseas. Different parts. It's just, yep. You got to pan. Yeah, you get them from wherever you can. Yep. Ryan, don't go anywhere. Tell you what, we'll take a quick break here. We'll come back. We'll kind of flesh out that a little bit more. Sure. While we're doing that, people can look. Is it just crimsontrace.com? Crimsontrace.com. Pretty simple. All right. Don't go anywhere. All right. Yep. Uh, we're at the NRA's annual meetings. We are, um, let's see here. We're in the Ruger booth. We're across from the FM booth. I'm looking across the way. There's the NRA booth. There's the Colt booth. There's, oh my gosh, American Tactical. Man, if you were here, you'd be having fun like us. <laughs> this is way too much fun. Tom Gresham here. This is Gun Talk. Be right back. Welcome back to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk from the Ruger booth at the NRA Show. All right, back with you. Tom Gresham, it's Gun Talk. We are... Uh, we're having so much fun around here. People are stopping us in, during the breaks and the commercial break, coming over and saying hello. It is just a, a great time. It's kind of like uh, old home week. It's, uh, you know, and it's, even if you don't know somebody, it's like you know people here, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. It absolutely. Really, it really it's is. a friendly group of people, too. We're, we're visiting with Ryan Donahue from Crimson Trace. It's a bunch of friendly people that come in. You said you're selling stuff out of the booth. So yeah. that's, that's cool. I, I didn't realize that. Yep. So, actually, the show we're doing, as we're speaking right now, will be heard a week from now. It's kind of a time shift deal. Okay. So, next year, when they come to the NRA show, they yep. need to be prepared to come to your booth, and they can get these deals. That's you, right. You yeah. got special things going on? We have some awesome stuff going on. So, we have special show pricing, which we always do for the NRA, so that you know we cut down the prices for everybody, so that they're here, they get a deal. Oh, cool. um, We're also giving them, with any purchase in the booth, uh, one of our new flashlights. It's the CWL 300. Oh. It's our EDC light. I just took it out for time. Is that Tom the one you so just showed that, me? Yep, oh, so man. That he can That's play nice with it. It's so really lightweight, too. I like that is. about it. It is. And then it's got um, what we did with it, too. You got the clip, and then you have the hat clip, the reverse clip on it. So okay. put it on the hat. So when you use you it as a it. headlight yep. as well. Um, and we have uh, the $50 uh, mail-in rebate going on right now That's on all the laser right products. So you could buy something at a discount in the booth, use the $50 mail-in rebate, and get a $70 flashlight on top of it. Now, can they use that rebate if they buy something in a store or online yep, as well? Yep, it's going on right now, online. Yep. You, okay. Crimsontrace.com, look it up. It's on most of our laser products, uh, $50 mail-in rebate. Sweet. Okay. Yep. So, obviously, the the big news you guys have been doing is uh, the scopes and all that. But you're not, like, just sitting there doing nothing on lasers That's as right. well. Yeah, we cannot keep that laser saddle that you and I were talking about in stock. No kidding. So, it is, the uh, laser saddle is for the Mossberg 590, the Shockwave 590A1. I think it makes the gun. It does, I, especially for that Shockwave. Yes. Because I forgot what, it's. we can't call it a shotgun, and we it, can't it, call it a pistol. It's a firearm. It's, it's just a firearm. Right. Which is awesome. Um, so but, you have, but they're hard to aim. They I are mean, hard I mean, to aim. Rea- reality is they're hard to aim. You put a laser on it, you're like, oh, okay, that and makes now sense. Now I can hit it. Yeah, we, we did a little uh, shoot with a bunch of the people from the industry, and we set up some steel targets, and we said, run through it one time, 
with just the seal targets with no laser. Okay. And then, okay, now put the laser on. And they were hitting every time with the laser. It's very hard to judge that from your hip. It is. Shooting from the hip, it's... Uh, you can do it if you practice a lot, but then if you have to do it under stress, I yeah. think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. So we have the laser saddle LS250 and LS250G. Mm-hmm. They're available now. And then um, one of the ones that we get asked about all the time is, are we going to make a laser for the 365? Uh, they're and, they're and in the booth. Are they really? The red and the green, as well as a light-only version. Okay, so how does it mount? Around the trigger guard, instinctive activation on the red and the green, like we always uh, have coined okay. there. So grip the gun like you would normally grip, and that laser is going to come on. How about holsters? Uh, holster options are all available from all the big companies. No Galco, kidding. yep, they're all they're all on board. Do you work with them in advance when you're going to bring out a, a laser? Yeah, I personally work with them in advance. So I send them uh, the molds for them without the lasers inside right. um, so that they can start building out the bodies for them. And so that way, out. when you have the laser ready, people say, yeah, but I couldn't carry it because there's no holster right. for it. You go, not a problem. Yep. They're already ready. The, the holsters are there. They're already ready. Put it on your 365, Put get the holster. Right. Good to go. Sweet. Ready to rock. That is really nice. Yeah. All right, let's touch just for a second on the whole red dot and what's going on in that world. Yeah, so there's five of them. Um, one for the pistol, uh, two open red dots for AR and shotgun, the 13 and 1400. The one to go and look at right now is the 1400. Okay. Um, huge viewable window, amazing red dot. Huh. Uh, shake to wake technology, all of the new stuff that's going on in there. And then we have our 1,000, um, nine years of battery life on this thing. Tom. What? Just throw it in the gun. Leave it on. Throw it in the gun safe. Nine years. Um, and then we have our 1,100, which is our battle site, fixed 3.5 magnification. All right. We're doing this show, okay? Okay. I got Jim Kinsey from our, you know, he's, he's running the show. He's yep. doing the board. Here. Just, just read what he just texted me. I'm not making this up. <laughs> what he, so he's not making it up. He said, can you go ahead, Tom. No, he says, can you please buy me a Crimson Trace Green for my 365? I'll reimburse you immediately. <laughs> Tell him that somehow there may be one that magically appears we, for him in a we box. We might be able to make this happen. I think we can saying. make that happen. That is hilarious. Get some of those marketing dollars over there, especially yeah. for that little plug on the radio. That, that worked out really good. <laughs> Well, I love my 365. Yeah. It's a great pistol. That whole um, area, that, that size pistol, I think it's going to be so hot for concealed carry. Absolutely. I, a lot of people that are coming to the booth, we have four or five 365s in the booth, all decked out with the different products. You know, people and see and for years we've said, I you know, talk about lasers really make a difference. I will tell you the other thing is I am slowly getting there, but I'm just about to get to the point where I think that maybe red dots on carry pistols makes sense. Hey, it, it's it's definitely a yeah. changing trend. As, you, as your eyes get older, you start to pay attention to these there things, There you right? go. There you go. <laughs> hey, Ryan, I appreciate you being here. It's CrimsonTrace.com. CrimsonTrace.com. Come over to the booth. Well, that that's will right. have passed. That's right. That's, that will that, this will be there next year. Next year. Come yeah, find we'll us in, in the booth. We'll be in Nashville next year. Yes. So make sure you make plans to come over there, bring your money, because you're selling stuff right there. And Nashville's always a good one. Huh? Yes, it is. Thank you so much. It Always a pleasure. a pleasure. All right. Don't go far. When we come back, we have uh, some more news and some really cool stuff going on here at the NRA annual meetings in Indianapolis. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk. This is Jeff with Black Hills Ammunition. Our Honey Badger line now features a new 40 Smith & Wesson caliber loading. Gelatin testing shows that this round outperforms conventional hollow points, not only in terms of velocity, penetration, and weight retention, but it also provides superior temporary cavities. The profile and solid copper construction assure flawless feeding. This is the latest technology in handgun performance. Black Hills Ammunition, the power of performance. Tired of searching the web for the best deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gun Dealio app today for deals and discounts right at your fingertips. Handguns, rifles, shotguns, ammo, optics, lasers, gun safes, targets, gun cleaners, grips, slings, and much, much more. Save money on products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gun Dealio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. 
when the U.S. military's elite units and law enforcement agencies across the globe demanded innovation and reliability, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. When world champion professional shooters demanded precision accuracy, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. So it's no surprise more and more civilian gun owners are refusing to settle for anything less. They're choosing Sig Sauer firearms, ammunition, electro optics, suppressors, air guns, and training. Sig Sauer. Never settle. So much fun. Sometimes I get a, a call from a friend that says, hey, there's something you need to know about. And, I don't know, two months ago or so, Connie Brooks contacts me. She says, I need to get on your show. we got a message to talk to you. So Connie from Barnes uh, Bullets just joins us right here. Thank you, first of all, for saying, hey, heads up, here's something over here you need to pay attention to. So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about Hunter Nation. And, you know, anything that I get involved in, I get involved with it because I feel it's the right thing to do, and I get very passionate about it. Right. And there are some amazing people on the board. Mark Geist, All right, who's I'll, here with us. I'm going to let you introduce Mark. Yeah. Well, Mark Geist is a great guy. He was actually one of the big names in the 13-hour problem with the Benghazi raid, and he survived, thank heavens, because he's the greatest man ever and a humble man, and I love him to pieces. Well, you were on the ground there. Yes, I was on the rooftop. You were on the rooftop? Yeah, I was on one of the rooftops. It, uh, we, got blo- we got blown up. That's when two of the, the guys that were, we were contractors, they were former Navy SEALs, Ty and Glenn got killed, standing right. next to me. Wow. Holy cow. So what is the connection here with Hunter Nation? What are we doing here? You know, what it really is, is it's about our hunting heritage. It's about the heritage that this country is founded on and what, I mean, I was raised out in the um, country on a farm and ranch, about 5,000 acres. Where? Um, Eastern Colorado. Okay. And, you know, I grew up hunting. That's how you fed your family a lot of the times. And, you know, we just see that eroding. So, um and not enough access to everyone. Yes. So Hunter Nation um, was formed, and this year we gave away 30 hunts, and they're world-class hunts. To get the hunt, all you had to do was put in $10 per hunt, huh. and you could only do it once, so somebody can't front-load it with oh, buying a lot okay. of tickets. Mm-hmm. Um, it equaled it out. So, so you, get, you get one shot at it. You can buy a $10 ticket, mm-hmm. and everybody has an equal chance because you can't go buy like a 1,000 of them. Right. And give me an idea what kind of hunts we're talking about here. Um, well, one of the hunts was with, is, is going to be this, well, we'll do it this coming fall. Um, it's going to be with me in Colorado. It's going to be an elk hunt. Uh, another one was an elk hunt with Donald Trump Jr. in Utah. Whoa. Um, another one's a full curl hunt in, uh, I think it's British Columbia. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And then. Th- these are hunts that would be tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. bit of it. Yeah. Holy cow. You know, and it's part of just. Getting the hunting, um, the hunters of this country kind of activated to understand that. I mean, we see a decline in hunting. We see a decline in open spaces. We see government wanting to uh, to take those uh, um, spaces and restrict them to conservation or their, well, their term of conservation. You know, and the other thing is, if you don't have access, people won't hunt. Right. I mean, it, that is... And all the research that's been done, NSSF has done this research for years. That is the number one reason that people stop hunting is because generally they move, and now they don't have the connections, and they don't have the access, and they don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. And so keeping the access there, making it available to people, is the key to keeping hunting going. And for people who are saying, okay, yeah, but if hunting goes down, no, 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 you understand. Hunting is, at its core, it's a big part of the Second Amendment fight. It also is a huge part of basically wildlife habitat restoration and preservation because hunters are the ones who pay for all of that. Right. I mean, really are. The hunting licenses and then everything that comes with that, that money goes back into conservation. I mean, you know, Wild Sheep Foundation, they're keeping wild sheep, uh, the Rocky Mountain wild sheep in the mountains. I mean, all of these groups... Um, you know, and they're focused on their one thing, and that's why Hunter Nation. We kind of wanted to be that umbrella to okay, that's what I was cover ask. all hunters. Okay. So, what does Hunter Nation bring to that? What is it? Well, no, I'm going to let you talk, Mark. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put it on your shoulders. <laughs> well, <laughs> I so, love it, but I'm going to let you talk. So, uh, you know, we've got to fight for our rights because right. if we're not fighting for them, somebody ain't speaking for them. We're going to see them dwindled away. I mean, that's it's just the nature of big government. 
It's a nature of one part of this country that doesn't want us to be hunting, doesn't want us to be. I mean, their idea of conservation is let's not hunt. They want, an example, Colorado. Right now, Colorado wants, the new governor in Colorado wants to introduce a wolf, 250 wolves into the western slope. Yeah, it just devastates the elk and the deer oh, population. No it's mm-hmm. incredible. And if you care about animals, I mean, if you really care about the wolf, why would you take a, an animal out of the pristine northern territories of Canada, Saskatchewan, where, it, I mean, the chance of it seeing a human being is like nil? Right. And put it in a place like Colorado you're where... Gonna have, you're going to have conflicts. You're going to have yes. interaction, and that interaction yeah. is going to in negative for one of the two yeah. or both. And, and it's going to be the wolf. Right. I mean, eventually it's going to be the wolf. So right. Just, yeah, exactly. So do people join Hunter Nation? Is it a membership organization? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah and with your, if you, if you want to hunt or uh, put in for a hunt, that $10 is going to give you your membership. And then there's different okay. levels of membership. Um, you know, like everything, we got some swag for you. Oh, cool. Um, that you'll get in the mail. And we're just going to keep people, we want to keep people informed of what's going on and keep people active in uh, Protecting our and the rights. website's hunternation.org.org. Yep. Okay, That's very cool. Uh, also, if they want to know what you're up to, it's markgeistgeist.com. Yes. So tell me what you've been doing. Um, you know, I do a lot of public speaking uh, about leadership, overcoming adversity, uh, just, you know, just kind of staying in that mental toughness. And then I've just recently got elected. Uh, this is my first year to be elected to the NRA board. Okay. Yeah. So, An inter- uh, interesting year to be uh, first time on the board. It is. It is. Uh, you know. I think it's just part of my life. I'm going to walk into, uh, I like walking into places that are going to have some hectic uh, chaos to them. So you look for tornadoes and dive into the middle of them. There we go. (laughs) Why not? You know, otherwise life is boring. Well, it's definitely not boring here this that's week. Right. Yeah, that's for no. sure. No. Holy cow. No. A lot of stuff going on. Well, congratulations on that. Hunter Nation is very cool. Connie, how'd you get involved in this? Well, my good friend Don Pay is actually one of the guys behind it. He's a brainchild on a lot of stuff. He's very, very passionate about hunting and very passionate about the politics behind the hunting. And he just doesn't want it to go away. And he's right. all about God, family, and country. And, huh. you know, that's, what, that's where our roots are is God, family, and country. And we need to keep that intact, and that's trying to be taken away. And so unless we're active on these things and not reactive, I mean, we have to be proactive. And so well, that, that's what Don brings to the table. That's very cool. I love the idea of uh, being able for $10 to buy in and get a chance at one of these. These are hunts of a lifetime. Oh, yeah. They are. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, like Don Trump go- Jr., Mike, I mean, Ted yeah. Nugent. And, I mean, it goes on and on. There's, I mean, they can look at the website and see what kind of people are, are supporting yeah. this group. And you can buy a ticket for each hunt, if I remember yes. right. Yes. Right. Yes. So, okay. So you can do, and I'll just tell you, when you told me about this, I went and looked it up. I bought a ticket for every hunt. Oh, great. I did. I mean, I just, yeah, I'm in. Doom. You know, whatever. I don't know how many hunts there were, but it's that times 10. It's what I bought. Trust me, I wanted to, but I didn't dare because I thought if no, I get chosen, you, you people say, I've it. been rigged. That's right. You can't do it. So I can yeah, do I was it. trying to get that hunt with Donald Trump Jr. You know, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> or wait, no, I, I heard he was trying to get one with me. Oh, <laughs> I see. That's how it works. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, uh, they're that good. I, I, I really did. I started just scrolling down and went, wow, this is like the real deal. This is yeah. Pretty, yeah. Pretty You know, you cool got Mike stuff. Waddell doing turkey hunting. You've got Craig Morgan doing a mountain lion hunt with Craig Morgan. I mean, Amazing the average stuff. person ain't going to get a chance to do that. Never. You know, the hunt itself, Never. and then with who it is, and part of that is sharing the stories with myself or Don or yep. Craig Morgan or Mike Waddell and, or anybody that's and involved. And in the process, doing good and doing the things that we don't need to be done, which is the other part of it. Oh, right. yes. Thank you, guys. I appreciate what you're up to, man. This is, this is a cool project. It well, really thank is. You. Uh, Tom, thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have a great uh, NRA show. We'll do. God All right. bless. All right. You take care. All right. Don't go anywhere, guys, because we'll be back in just a minute. We are having a ball here at the NRA's annual meetings. It is, uh, yeah, it's busy around here. It's crowded. The halls are full. But you know what? Everybody's smiling. Everybody's having a good time. And oh, why wouldn't you? It's like halls and halls of guns, guns, guns. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk from the Ruger booth at the NRA Show. All right, welcome back. Tom Gresham here. We're at the uh, NRA's annual meetings here. We've got lots of folks, a lot of our friends walking by, shaking hands. We're having a good time, taking pictures. It is uh, it's a great time. It really is. It's... 
for those of us who've been coming to this a long time, it's kind of like summer camp in a way. You get to see a lot of the same people. Sometimes you go, oh, yeah, I know you. What have you been up to? You're catching up. How's the family? All of that. And also, of course, I mean, there's the whole uh, Second Amendment aspect of it, find out what's going on there. And, yes, uh, remember, this show, just this is kind of inside baseball deal, we're actually doing this show on the Saturday at the NRA show. So you'll be hearing this a week after the NRA show. So whatever the news is that's breaking here, you will know about it. Actually, we don't know about it right now because there's, there's intrigue. There's things going on, and I don't know how it's all going to come out, but by the time we hear this, you'll probably know a lot more about it than I know when I'm talking about it right here, uh, all things going on. But I'm looking around here. We've got uh, dogs. We've got kids. Uh, we've got a little bitty girl right in front of me. She's petting this little dog. It is great. Mark Geis has his uh, service dog with him right here. Very cool stuff. It is, it is so neat. The frustrating part for me is I don't get to go see everything, and there are new products in booths out here that I'm not going to get to go see. Uh, So that's frustrating. And one of the things we do, of course, we try to get as much of that information as we can. We put it on the Gun Dealio app so that you can absolutely check that out and find out what's going on there. Uh, But everywhere you go, it's like, oh, have you seen this? No, I haven't seen that. Cool, i got to go see that. Make a list. So we get to go see all the the stuff that's going on. One of the things I am noticing, and you remember, I've been going to this for a long time, and I'm, I'm sitting here watching the crowds go by. The crowd looks different than it used to at the NRA. It used to be all older guys. And now I'm seeing a lot of teenagers. I'm seeing a lot of women. Uh, this thing is it kind of the whole gun ownership cuts across all of America now, which is one of the great parts of the whole thing. It's like it's everybody. People say, well, I didn't uh, What's a gun owner look like? Well, they look like you. Whatever you look like, that's what gun owners look like these days. Because it's all of us. It's every one of us. And I don't care if you're old or young or a man or woman or polka dotted or purple, uh, you're a gun owner. And we had another story this week. It's one of those, if you've been following this, you know this. This is not news to you. But for a lot of people, it's startling. The court ruled that the police in the uh, Parkland sh- shooting Uh, they had no duty to protect anybody. Well, I've been saying that for years. The courts have always ruled that police do not have a duty to protect you. They kind of have this general duty to protect everyone, but they have no duty to protect any one individual. Well, people say, well, that's messed up. Well, yeah, it is. Well, what's that mean? Well, what that means is that do not outsource your safety. Don't depend upon somebody else to take care of your family. I would add to that my personal feeling. That's irresponsible. That's like raising a kid and not teaching them how to cross the street, to look both ways before you cross the street. If you don't have the means and the ability and the will to take care of your own family, you can't count on somebody else to do it. That's just crazy. And now the courts repeatedly, here, again, this last week, they say, look, the police have no duty to protect anyone, okay? And there it is. So what's that going to mean to you? Well, if you're serious about it, if you really take safety and security, you know, seriously, not only do you have to get the right gear, but you have to get the right training, you have to make a commitment, you have to make a change in the way you live. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, bunkered down or anything like that, but you have to say, I'm serious about this. I'm going to go practice once a month. I'm going to get serious. I'm going to take training once a year, real training. Simple as that. That's the kind of things we talk about. That is part of our gun culture. We take all of this very seriously because we take our families seriously, and we know ultimately it's up to us, not only to protect ourselves, but to protect our Second Amendment. That is a huge part of the NRA annual meetings here. By the way, it is going to be in Nashville next year. Make plans to attend. Hey, don't go far. We'll be right back with more right here. we got some news, and we got got a lot of fun stuff going on. <laughs> 